now we are going to discuss the assumptions that were proposed for the nuclear models before the theory that was suggested by the nuclear shell model. So what was the theory proposed? They said that the nucleons are inside the nucleus. So the nucleons would be moving inside the nucleus just as the electron moves inside the atoms. Since atoms contains electrons that are revolving around the nucleus and the electrons revolve in particular orbits. So in the same fashion, the nucleons are also revolving inside the nucleus in specific orbits. So they said that the nucleons move in an orbit which is determined by the potential energy function Vr and that Vr is the average effect of all the nucleons with all other nucleons. So this Vr potential is determined to form the orbit. So just as, just as I said that there is an analogy as the electron moves inside the atom similarly the nucleons also moved inside the nucleus and the potential energy that the orbit has is compared to the coulombic energy that the electron faces. So what was the difference in the assumptions? The difference was that that the electron used to possess a potential well whereas in this case the potential experienced by the nucleon was in between the potential well potential and it was a complicated function and it was represented as minus v naught square plus a r square when it is an oscillatory type of function. So the, com the potential executed by the nucleons were complicated where in this minus v naught represents the square well potential. So a r square in this a is constant and r is the distance between the nucleon and the center of force that is acting on the nucleons. Whereas the coulomb potential that is experienced by the electron is you know that it is inversely proportional to r that is 1 of q1 q2 upon 4 pi epsilon naught r. So the coulomb potential is proportional to 1 by r whereas in this the potential experienced by the nucleon is directly proportional to the square of the radial function. So this was the difference. Secondly, in an atom there is only one particle revolving around the nucleus. Whereas in the nucleus itself there are two particles. One particle is proton and one particle is neutron. So both on both the particles we have to consider every effect. So as Pauli's exclusion principle is applied on the electrons Similarly, here also Pauli's exclusion principle, Hund's rule, all the rules had to be applied on protons as well as neutrons since it is having two particles in the nucleus. So what happened that the energy levels were calculated or shown regarding these assumptions. So what they found that the energy levels <coughs> that emerged from the calculations did not agree with the observed sequence of the magic numbers. As we have already discussed that 2, 8, 20, 50, 82, 126 are magic numbers. So the filling of the nucleons in the various shells did not match with the magic numbers. Whereas the model proposed by the shell model was in a complete agreement to justify the magic numbers. So Maria Mayer and J.H.D. Jensen in 1949 realized that in addition to a potential we should also incorporate spin orbit interactions to measure the energy levels. So it was important to incorporate a spin orbit interaction whose magnitude is such that the consequent splitting of the energy levels into sub levels means when there is a splitting of LS coupling or when we are using the spin and the orbit interaction we are seeing. So there are multiple many energy levels also sub levels are also there and those sublevels are quite higher as compared to the atomic energy levels that we see in an electron. So due to the multiple sublevels and when we count the total number of nucleons in the nucleus or at the various level, so there we got some magic numbers also. So magic numbers were justified by using the shell model. So all these observations led to this development of the shell model. So next we shall discuss the nuclear shell model.